Hi guys, and welcome to another video tutorial. In this video I'll be painting a Zaku from start to finish in the RX78 colour scheme that I showed in the previous video. Hopefully by the end of this video you'll have a good idea of how easy it is to paint a Gumpler kit and also how easy it is to put together a HG kit as I'll be showing you start to finish me building the kit and putting it together. So, go grab yourself a nice hot drink or a nice ice cold beer and we'll get started. This is the Bandai manual. It's all in Japanese but it's still super easy to follow if you don't happen to read Japanese. All the parts are labelled with numbers and all the runners have an alphabetic number as well that you can follow easily. I've cut all the parts off the sprues for the head and for the body armour according to the manual. I then separate all the parts into the separate sections that they're going to be coloured in. So there's going to be red, yellow, gunmetal, chrome and white for the head. And as you can see then I place all the sections separately on the holder I have to the right of the screen. I'll start off by priming the parts that are due to be chrome in Alclod's Black Gloss Primer. All the parts that are not going to be chrome are now being primed in Vallejo's polyurethane grey primer. I'm also taking note and making sure that all the separate sections are kept together so I know which colour is which. After letting the Alclad Black Gloss Primer cure, I then proceed to spray the Chrome for Plastic by Alclad over the top. Only a fine dusting of the chromes needed to get that super reflective and awesome looking finish.
A few months ago I was sent mechas and robot colours by Migamos to review, so rather than just spray some of the colours on some paper I thought we'd actually see what they look like on a model. So in this video I'll be using all six colours that are included in the set on Saku. Here I'm working at about 15 psi laying down a really thin coat of the blue colour in the set. I'm making sure that it goes on nice and smoothly and evenly but I'm not putting too much paint down because I don't want to spoil the finish. I'll go back over with a second coat after the first coat has finished. Here I've added some white to the mix of the blue, so I added 25% white to 75% of the blue. The white you can use is any airbrush colour, but I happen to use Vallejo's Model Air White. I'm avoiding all of the edges of the panels and just painting towards the centre. It's going to leave a really cool weathered effect. Hopefully you can see on camera here it's very fine but I've actually gone back in with the neat blue from the Mecca's paint set because I felt that I went a little bit too light when I added the white to the mix. So I'm pulling the air back far away and just adding a very fine mist just to bring back a little bit of that blue colour where I find it's been lost a little bit going a little bit too light with the white colour.
I added white to the red mix again, 75% red to 25% white and just aimed the airbrush just on the center parts of the panels. Again, it's important to note here guys I'm working at low PSI about 15 PSI might be a little bit lower than that so anywhere between 12 and 15 PSI and I'm only pulling back a tiny little bit on the airbrush and just following the lines of the helmet just to get that nice shade in This is a new metallic colour from the Game Air range and it's really nice. It goes down super smooth and it leaves like a gunmetal finish.
After all parts from the head and body were painted, everything then gets finished with a satin coat of Vallejo varnish. I'm following the manual that I showed at the very start of the video but here I'm going to show you how I put the body together and also how I put the head together.
Here I've got all the parts lined up for the arms and for the side skirt armour. I'm going to be using Vallejo Model Air Hall Red to do the pre-shading on the skirt armour. I'm using exactly the same technique that I used on the helmet so I'm going in with a dark grey as the base colour then I'm coming back in with a light grey for the highlight colour.
When doing the highlighting, it's easiest just to focus at one panel facing at a time, or one section at a time. Then you're only concentrating on one part of the miniature, or one part of a model at a time, and it doesn't seem overwhelming. Here you'll see illustrated perfectly that I'm just working on one tiny section at a time, just filling it out with the lighter colour grey. Here I'm putting the side skirt armour together and also the arms. I do apologise that sometimes my hands get in the way of the camera and unfortunately it does block what I'm actually doing so apologies for that but I hope you get a feeling of how easy it is to put a HG kit together and how fun it is also.
that's left to do is a pin wash and I think I'm using Vallejo's Badab Black for this to be quite honest guys and also to paint some of the metallic areas that I didn't do in the airbrushing stage. Just adding a little bit of smoke effect to the edge of the bazooka nozzle with a Tamiya weathering kit. For this video I'm going to say that it's done and it's complete but there's a hell of a lot more that we could actually do to this miniature to make it look better. For a start, we could really weather it and make it look really cool, which I'll probably do in a future video, going over some techniques that could be used with enamel products. But for now, we'll say that Zaku's done, and I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please hit the like button. It really helps. And also, share it amongst friends. And thanks for watching, guys, and I'll catch you in the next one.